Hello, my name is Daniel Mai, and I'm a technical sales manager at DeGero. Many of our customers have been asking us about our record and transfer function, better known as store and forward. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the settings required and some use cases. Let's take a look. The ENCO internal drive can record up to 60 hours of recording depending on the encoding quality. Here are some common use cases. Let's start with scenario number one. Bad conditions. When you arrive on site, you will test and determine if your modems are not firing up. The station may complain of poor video quality because of network congestion. You have the option to use the record function on your ENGO mobile while you're doing a live hit. This is one way to record a high quality file that can be forwarded after the live event or segment. Here's scenario number two. If you need to send whatever you have captured on the field back to the station quickly for either promos or openings or editing, the videographer can use the ENGO to record footage either while gathering with their camera or after the fact by playing back into the system. Let's say you're covering a sporting event. You can send scrum clips throughout the event. The clips are sent back to your broadcast facilities between scrums for distribution. And of course, there's breaking news. You want to transmit content back to your news station as quickly as possible. So in that situation, a videographer may have recorded several clips during the news gathering. And while they're driving back to the station, they have the ability to transfer their video back to the home base so that it can be available for editing quickly. Let's switch gears. This is the ENGO main screen. When you press the record menu, it will bring up the encoding rate menu where you can quickly decide whether or not you want to record at a lower or higher bit rate. Depending on your deadline, you can adjust the file encoding rate accordingly. A 6 megabit file is quite acceptable, but if you need to transmit urgently, you may consider a lower bit rate. Let's go back to the main menu. You can find the record settings by pressing down the arrow on the upper right hand side of the home page. You hit more, settings, and record. Here we can change the encoding rate, the file format, turn on or off auto transfer, and add a file prefix to our file name. Let's drill this down a little further. Our file encoding rate is set to six megabits per second. This will generate approximately a 44 megabyte file. Let's compare this to a common broadcaster format like XDCAM and many others out there that can record at 50 megabits. This will generate approximately 450 megs per minute of video. Let's go back and now look at the file formats that are available to us. You may want to verify with your engineering team to see what is preferred at your operations between M2TS, MP4, or MOV. Our units are set by default to M2TS, and there's a very good reason for this. The advantage of this format is that it creates a usable clip even if the power is turned off. So for some reason, if your battery dies, your video cable gets disconnected, the file will still be usable without the need to re-record the whole file again. Let's go back. With auto transfer on, the ENGO will start transmitting the file automatically after you terminate a record. And with the prefix settings, you can easily add text to the file name. For example, you could add the reporter's name or an event name. Let's now return to the ENGO preview screen and we will start our recording. When it starts, you will see the time remaining at the bottom of the screen and on the right hand side, the record timer. I'll just record a short clip here. Once the clip is recorded, your next step is to go to the transfer menu. Click the arrow down, select transfer. Our recorded file will be listed in clips and you alternatively can select files if you want to transmit files from a USB stick. A common example of this option is a file that was edited in the field and generated from a video editing program. By selecting clips, I now have visibility on all my recorded clips. I'll select my latest record, but if you want, you can select multiple clips for transmission. Once the selection is made, press on action, and that brings several options. I can immediately transfer the clip. I can also back it up to a USB stick. You can delete it. You can look at the clip information, such as the size, the encoding rate, and duration. I'll select transfer, and my file is being transmitted to my waypoint receiver in this case, 
receiver 41463. The green check mark on the preview video indicates a successful transfer. Now let's take a look at the workflow options on the receiver end. There are two possibilities. A production staff plays out the waypoint files in real time for ingest, which I'll demonstrate, and complete automation of file transfer, transcode, and delivery to your local video servers. Let's look first at the file playout directly from control. From the clips menu, I'll select clips and this will display all of the clips available to play out. As I select our clip, it expands and provides all of the details about the clip, including the origin, the receiver, and all other related video information. In the Playout section, I will select an available output and press play. Then the file will be played on that output in real time. It is worth noting that a file sent to a particular receiver can only be played out of that receiver. In the workflow illustration, you can see an example of an automated file transfer. A watch folder is set up on the waypoint and the files are automatically transferred to a transcode engine, reformatted to a standard compatible with your server system, and delivered directly to your workspace, ready to be edited and aired. This concludes our quick overview of Store and Forward. For additional information, please head to digero.com.